Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at GTX 1050 from Palette. It's from their Carmex range, which basically means it's a fully passive card. It's your typical GTX 1050 Ti, the you know mid-range of choice from quite a few years ago. So if you still have one of these or you're looking to maybe get a slight upgrade, these aren't that cheap on eBay. But you're going to struggle to get something like a GTX 1060, 1070 or anything of the 20 series. And just AMD stuff is just so hard to come by. But these, because they're not that wanted, while they're still going for a silly price in some cases, if you're desperate, it might be worth picking one of these up over this, say, something like the GT 1050. Because the GT 1050 does have issues regarding only having 2 gig of RAM. But below that, obviously, you've got the GT 1030, which is adequate at times. But anyway, this is a 75 watt card, which is great. So no additional power required on top, which I always find a nice bonus. It's passive, but I've never had any overheating issues with this card in particular. Did get some coil wine from this, which I'll do a video on at some point. But let's see how this handles... A selection of games ranging from stuff released recently, mainly the back end of 2020, and some older games, and just see where this lands in terms of performance and see what games you can kind of play. So, let's start with some 3D Mark benchmarks, shall we? Here we have Time Spy, which we scored 2,663. In Fire Strike, we score 7,102. In Night Raid, we score 26,935. And finally, in Wildlife, we score 16,559. Lastly, in 3D Mark, we score a respectable 7,188. Moving on to the Final Fantasy XV benchmark, this is at 1080p on the light setting. We are getting 50 FPS roundabout goes up a bit into the 60s occasionally and down into the 40s. But again, like this is more than playable. Overall score of 5,296, which is an acceptable score. So if you want to play Final Fantasy 15, you can do it on this card. How about an MMO like Final Fantasy 14? This is a 1080p running on standard laptop, which is their low setting. This is the most intense part of the benchmark, where you normally get the lowest frame rates. We're getting an average around 64 FPS which is pretty good. So you could probably bump up a few settings here and still get a smooth 60 FPS experience throughout most of it. We score 13,909 overall, so that's a pretty good score. Now how about something like Strange Brigade? This is a well-optimized game and it's running on Ultra. We get an average around 47 FPS at 1080p. Lock a few of those settings down, maybe to medium and high, and you should be able to have a smooth 60 FPS experience. Okay, well, how about Fortnite? Everyone seems to want to play Fortnite, or wants to get a machine that plays Fortnite. The GTX 1050 Ti is absolutely fine. You don't get the best frame rates, of course. This is running on high. And as you can see, you're getting an average of around about 58 FPS, with lows of 37, which isn't the best, but it could be much worse. Knock it down to medium, you should get a smooth 60. Now, sticking with Battle Royale games, how about Apex Legends? This is running on everything turned down to low, and this is from a few seasons ago, but it runs perfectly fine. Newer season is a little bit more intense, but it shouldn't make much difference. We're getting an average around 73 FPS at 1080p, and it's absolutely fine. Well, how about something like Doom Eternal? This is 1080p and Ultra. We're getting an average around 52 FPS, which seems to be the running theme at the moment with this card. Not quite hitting 60, but more than playable. We've got a few dips into the 40s and high 30s, but overall more than playable. Like a few settings down, find that happy medium and you should be able to play us at a solid 60. This is what we have. How about Vermintide 2? It's going to get very busy at times. If you play the games like Left 4 Dead, you get the idea, it's just Left 4 Dead in a Warhammer setting. And, as you can see, we're getting a minimum of 25 and an average around 38. And this isn't even the busiest part. This is an extreme, so you have a lot of 
headroom to turn settings down to get a better frame rate. But because of the way this game works, anything in the 30s, 40s should be more than playable. Now, let's try something modern like Metro Exodus. We are on the medium setting here, and as you can see, it's getting around about an average of 36 FPS. And this is just at the start of the game. Later on, when there's a lot of snow, it can dip a bit lower, but you have some headroom to turn it down to low. So overall, this game, I would say it's playable. It's a very uh, console-type FPS anyway. Very fun to play. But you're not going to get 60 FPS on this card, I don't think. Unless you really feel around a bit and set it to like 720p. Now, how about something like Baldur's Gate 3? This is technically my newest game because it's still in early access. This is on the default settings, I believe, on Ultra. And we're getting an average around 28 FPS. You can knock a few settings down, turn shadows off to get the FPS up a little bit. But this game is in early access, so there is, should be some improvements in the future. But this game is currently playable, and being a turn-based game, you shouldn't really have any major issues playing this game on this card. We have no time for now, another modern game. This is Mafia, the remake. And this is one of the more tense scenes at the start of the game. Most of the cutscenes seems to have the most issues with the lowest frame rates. And we're getting around about 42 FPS average. When you're driving around and actually playing the game, you should get higher than that. But I'm just showing this here because this is about the worst it gets. A few explosions and stuff going on, and you might get slightly worse FPS as, as little peaks. But overall, the FPS is pretty solid around about the mid-40s. Now, how about Shadow of the Tomb Raider? This game requires a little bit more grunt. This is running everything on low at 1080p. This is just the benchmark. And we get an average around 55, 56 FPS. So more than playable for a game like Tomb Raider. And here's a comparison. Here's the original Tomb Raider of the reboot series. And we're getting 78 FPS average, but this is on Ultra. I think it's ultra, it's the setting just below the maximum setting. So, so all the rebooted Tomb Raider games should be more than playable on this card. So if you haven't picked those up or played them yet, you can get them for a good price these days. So they're certainly worth a play if you want to use something like the GTX 1050 Ti. Now let's go a little older. Here's Alien Isolation. This game is generally well optimised for most cards anyway. Here running at 1080p, everything on Ultra, and we're getting a very respectable average of around about 130, 140 FPS. You get dips into the mid 90s, such as here when you're picking at the terminal, but overall, the FPS is pretty high. Now, because there's an unwritten rule, let's have a look at Crisis. This is running everything maxed out at 1080p. As you can see, we're not really getting 60 FPS. We're averaging around about the mid 50s, which is okay. Turn some anti aliasing off, and you should get a smooth 60 FPS experience. In terms of mid range cards, only the GTX 1650 has been able to hit that magic 60 FPS number, but the GTX 1050 Ti isn't nearly there. Well, anyway, that's just a quick look at a few games with this card. Granted, it struggles with the newer stuff, but at least you can run at 1080p, which is a nice bonus. If you don't mind knocking the resolution down a bit, you can get a smoother frame rate, of course. But with modern games such as Apex Legends, Fortnite, and live service stuff, it seems to run just fine. And with newer games like Mafia, we don't get the perfect experience, but it's acceptable. Console level experience, I would call it. You know, you can almost call this a 1080p console card at this point. And that's all I really have to say on it, really. In terms of heat, though, with this particular card, it doesn't get too hot. I mean, it hits about 80 degrees, which is, is hot. But it doesn't throttle or anything like that. The other thing to point out is probably the price of this card. I picked this one up for approximately, I think, £80, but that's because it's the passive version. I wouldn't pay any more than that. For a card like this. Realistically it should be around about the £70 mark. If not lower. 
but in the current climate of very expensive cards, do not be surprised to be paying around about £100 for this card. Now, you might not think that's acceptable, but it's what we got at the moment, isn't it? But I hope that was informative enough. Obviously, I can't cover every single game. I might post a video in the future showing a large selection of games. But for now, that was just a cross-section of some older games and newer games. And I thank you for watching. Obviously, like or dislike the video, depending on how you feel on it. Leave a comment below if you've got any questions. And if you could, subscribe. That would be a great help to this channel. Still early days, but we're getting there. But for now, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. So, goodbye.